Hello, this is Dread from Epic Builds, and in today's video topic, we'll be going over Intelligent Stacking, Cold Projectile, Cryomancer, Skeleton Archer, Rip Blood, Twisted Heart, Lich's Scorn, Necromancer, an update to a build I played a full year ago. Finally, I can say that Skeleton Mages and Skeleton Archers are finally back on the table, and can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with most of the endgame in Last Epoch. So it's history lesson time. About a year ago, we didn't have Empowered Monoliths, we just had Reign of Dragons as the level 100 monolith, and the difficulty of the game was very static. This meant a lot of builds like Skeleton Projectile Necromancer had plenty of damage to deal with the entire endgame we had at the time, which wasn't very much. This year they've added multiple different endgame systems and it's been amazing. But slowly, as Necromancer was nerfed globally with the Dreadshade changes, and Empowered Monoliths raising the average power level requirements of builds to function well in Endgame, this led Projectile Necro not being a build I could recommend anymore, as skeletons are exactly the same as they were two years ago. Legendaries helped a bit, and they were much closer, but not enough for me to merit making a video on, and they were definitely power crept. Then in this recent hotflix, they added Lich's Scorn into the game. Lich's Scorn, TLDR is, stack intelligence for cold pen, which we're stacking intelligence anyways as a necro, and use infernal shade for a bunch of minion cold damage. This allows skeletons to scale their damage all the way up to T4 Jirla and beyond. In all of this footage, this is me having about 50 intelligence, which you could easily double that number with some better gear choices. I just simply didn't have the best gear laying around and not enough to actually support this archetype. This has led to a lot of growth for the projectile necro archetype. The old version's idea being pretty much having as many projectiles as possible so that you could bypass bad minion AI and lack of AoEs. Thankfully EHG recently did a minion AI rework allowing our minions to function much better than before. Now we simply take that idea and refine it even further, as we used to use Rip Blood just for the targeting given by Stench of Blood, which was pretty much mandatory before to make the skeletons attack where you wanted. Now Rip Blood has an even larger importance than ever before, which I'll touch upon in the skill tree section of the video. The biggest question I'm sure you've had by now, if we're using all these infernal shades on our minions, how are we making sure they aren't dying? Does an Infernal Shade nuke your minions? Normally, yes. But with some savvy techs, we can minimize the downsides of using Infernal Shade while also maximizing the benefits. First off, we want as low of adaptive damage as humanly possible for our Infernal Shade. That means running something like a Reach of the Grave, which is a very low base type for a wand while also being great for our minions, and opting out of running the shared buff node inside Dreadshade, Symbiotic Apparition, which would give us a lot of flat damage scaling. We sadly have to run Jirla's Obsession, which gives us about like 10 adaptive, but it's not enough to brick the build thankfully. This on top of running only intelligence and no increased damage whatsoever, and is also we're also getting as much minion sustain as possible, has completely removed the infernal shade damage from the equation. It has been so great in fact that I ended up running the infinite scaling node inside infernal shade so we can benefit from all the attack and cast speed, just because I was able to deal with the degen by sometimes reapplying infernal shade. We also do not run the infinite duration node on minions, which allows it to fall off. But then we run the refresh duration node inside Dreadshade, making it so on single target we can just maintain the insane 72% attack and cast speed, while also making it so when we go AFK we don't need to worry about our infernal shade killing our minions. With all this extra tech on top of the old skeleton projectile necromancer, it has allowed this build to reach new heights and attain a competitive spot next to wraiths, abomination, and zombies as a close fourth in terms of overall power level for necromancer. If you end up enjoying the build, I'd suggest leaving a like on the video and subscribing to the channel, as that's the best way to support my efforts here at Epic Builds, and also the best way to tell YouTube I'm doing a good job. With all that being said, let's get in game, shall we?
All right, here we are in game with the build. So the quick skill rotation here is simply we're just going to have our skeletons attack stuff. As you can tell, that's very poo poo damage. But as we add everything else here, it goes into overdrive, which is really nice, by the way. We go up to like 30, 40 K hits per, uh, per minion. Now this will go up a lot more. If you have a lot more intelligence, I have like 59. You could always get up to like a hundred intelligence as a necro. You could also build into more minion crit. I actually opted for an Oracle amulet instead of a death rattle. A death rattle would be a very easy choice in getting a lot more damage, but I wanted to make this build T4 drill viable and did not want to just be squishy. That's pretty much it for the skill rotation. Now for monoliths, what I like to do, I like to use the A button to keep the murder ball with me minions with this much uh, investment with like some movement speed and stuff they seem to be good enough to just simply keep near your cursor like this and then as you do that what happens is we're gonna move through the monolith and then bam we gotta like shoot and like just do a gigantic puke on a pack and that's usually enough to blow up a pack or two and then you rinse and repeat and that usually works well for monoliths and then for single target make sure to reapply your dread shades as what happens if you reapply your dread shade is it reapplies the duration of your uh, infernal shades meaning that instead of you know of course since we don't have the you know infinite you know infinite amount right infinite duration this means that they can just keep going and that's pretty much it for a uh, single target i also as well of course use a uh, rip blood because we're using uh twisted heart that's pretty much it for the skill rotation now for the skills themselves uh, first thing off, we'll go over uh, skeletons. This is your stereotypical skeleton setup, but if you've never played skeletons before, I'll go over it. Three, put three points in the grave tide. Eventually, if you get plus two to uh, skeletons, you can do five points in the snow. The adaptive damage is nice. Even with the infernal shade adaptive damage, thanks to Lich's Scorn, you still want as much adaptive damage as possible. One point into Cryomancer so that we can turn all our mages into Cryomancers because we want Cryomancers, not mages, because their adaptive damage is cold, which gets turned into, you know, cold damage, which scales with the pen from our uh, offhand. Then one point into Frost Lich just makes it so that we have no mages or Pyromancers in the pool, meaning that we only get Cryomancers. Then four points in Splinter Dominion. This makes it go from one projectile per cast to three projectiles per cast, which is very important. Makes the build feel a lot better in terms of clear as you want as many projectiles as possible. Then four points of Argonautic Speed. This is more attack and cast speed, which is really good. 20% more cast speed is great. And we're not grabbing the one node into Ossian Frenzy because I already get Frenzy from the top of the uh, top of the tree, pretty much. For, uh, for Necromancer. Then three points in Stellar Mortis. This base crit's nice. The movement speed's nice. All of it's nice. And it allows us to get Grey Merchant. This percentage health gained on crit allows your skeletal mages to pretty much stay alive all the time and beats the Infernal Shade, you know, degen. Most of the time on bosses and stuff, your skeletal mages will survive even if your skeletal archers die because of this node then one point into order of death for the extra skeletal mage. Then for skeletal archers, this is a very specific skeletal archer tree. Two points travel into unbound necromancy, one point into grave walkers for the extra skeleton because we want as many as possible because we're benefiting so much from it. One point travel to marrow tap, although the health leech is nice. Two points into empty the grave. This makes it so that when your expendable skeleton archers die, we can simply press one button and summon three more, which is great. Three points travel into Necrotic Conviction, although the more damage is nice. Uh, eventually, when I get enough node, I mean, get some plus levels, I want to grab this node so we have an extra skeleton. But this tree is very, very uh, tight as it is because I don't have any plus to levels yet. But if you have a plus to level, obviously grab Hollow Walkers. I found that the other nodes are more important because we grab one point to Bone Armor travel, then two points into Patience. So the reason why this is important is this cooldown recovery speed applies to the cooldown for fire arrow. And this makes it so that you're firing fire arrows a lot more, even though it's behind the bone armor thing for um, skeleton warriors, it's global cooldown recovery speed for everything, right? Which is great. Then three points travel into Unholy Rage for the, uh, the attack cast speed and movement speed's great though. One point into Meryl Walkers for the extra skeleton. One point to, with Fire Arrow 
uh, travel so that we can use fire arrow. Uh, pretty much just makes it so that they shoot like a singular arrow, but then we add this node, fire arrow multi-shot. Now we, uh, we shoot three projectiles in kind of like an AOE. And that's very important. You must be wondering, Dread, why aren't you grabbing ice arrow? Mainly due to the amount of points Ice arrow doesn't really do anything. It just makes the base fire to cold. And since it's only once every few attacks, it doesn't matter. And you're getting a bunch of flat from Infernal Shade that doesn't care about the base damage. So you can actually keep the base damage fire and still benefit from all the cold damage and cold pen. And it just saves you a point. As you can tell, it's already very, very, uh, you know, point intensive. If I were to have plus three to skeletons, I would put one point to hollow walkers, then two points into impatience, and that would be perfect tree. That's pretty much it for skeletons. Now for dread shade here, it's a little bit different than your normal stereotypical dread shade setup for multiple reasons. Four points into spectral presence. This makes it so dread shade is big enough to encircle everything because we want everything to be in our dread shade. One point in lone watcher makes it so that our minion no longer drains health and it increases duration, but makes it so that we only have one maximum dread shade. This is fine as long as you have a big enough AOE and you don't need more than one dread shade because they don't stack. Then three points in Dying Coven. We really like this increased cast and attack speed. This is global pretty much and works for both your uh, skeletal mages and archers. Four points into Grim Fate. 60% more damage. Why not? This also makes it so the minion that is applied with Dread Shade takes 100% increased damage, but our minions are tanky enough that it doesn't matter. And also it does increase the AoE for Dread Shade as well, making it gigantic so that all of our stuff can fit inside the AoE, which is great. Then we don't grab Symbiotic Apparition, like I said, because this Dread Shade was changed to give you a flat amount of damage, uh, which would apply to Infernal Shade, which would make it do a lot more damage, which we don't want because we want our Infernal Shade to do as little damage as possible. Then four points into Lingering Doom. This gets turned into cold. Base uh, Dread Shade gets turned into cold thanks to the offhand. So this is all just flat cold, just extra flat cold on top of everything else, which is great. Three points into Wisdom of the Dead. I don't think you technically need this. You can go to Martyrdom for armor. Uh, you could go into Flesh Harvest. There's a few things you can go into instead of this. Uh, but I just had an extra point I wanted to put around. I don't think one point to Flesh Harvest would do anything because your minions are always, you know, 100% HP. Then one point in the Congregation of Shades. This makes it so that you can uh, one additional Dread Shade or Infernal Shade at once. You start out with four. This gives you plus one. You get plus one in here. So you have six. So you can have one or seven, I think. You can have one. And then I think... Yeah, you can have seven Shades at once, which is great because of that. Then one point into Infernal Dread so that it refreshes your Infernal Shades because you're not running infinite duration on your Infernal Shades here. So that when I go away and go AFK or something, the Infernal Shades there, you see how they're going on? Now, instead of them going on and eventually killing my minions with infinite damage scaling, they just turns off. But then when I'm in a boss, if I want to keep that damage scaling they get from it, the increased attack and cast speed, all I have to do is just simply apply Dread Shade. Bam, I'm good. Apply Dread Shade. Bam, I'm good. And I never have to apply Infernal Shade ever again, which is great. Although you might want to eventually recast them because they do do a lot of damage eventually uh, over time. That's, that's pretty much it for Dread Shade. Then for Infernal Shade here, three points travel to Influence. Don't care about the area because it does nothing for us. One point into Devouring Flames makes us so our minions are targetable. One point into Burn Trail. This is nice because it gives our minions auto haste that have them applied, although we get haste from the tree, but we don't have anything else to apply to our tree anyways. Then one point into Subjugation. This is that infinite scaling damage node I keep talking about. This makes it so that the minions damage when they take damage and all that, this is infinite. It keeps going. This is why you want to recap cast your infernal shade so your minions don't always die then three points of demonic possession this is the whole reason why we're recasting dread shade with infer uh recasting infernal shade with dread shade like the duration we reset the duration which is really great 72 percent increased attack speed can speed and movement speed is absolutely amazing for single target so it's insane amount of damage scaling right there then one point into blade, uh, blaze shade travel, five points into ignition for the cast speed mainly because we like being able to cast fast. Then two points into legion. This uh, this normally has really bad targeting, but thanks to the fact it can only target our minions, it actually just casts like about three to 
three to two infernal shades each time it, it's targeting's really weird but you can eventually get six on all of your guys which is nice and thanks to the refresh from infernal Sh dread we don't have to like do that much uh messing around with it then three points travel into cackling frames and increased duration actually is useful for once then one point to flight a fire for the extra shades so we can get up to seven shades in total you could technically run the gloves for extra shades the four maximum shades but that would be very bad as you'd be scaling infernal shades damage too and your minions would slowly die and then we go rip blood normally rip blood we take five points in the humomancer cast speed's great we want as much cast speed as possible three points the thirst this makes it so our uh, rip blood goes to zero mana even though we have the minus three mana cost uh this is just for the cast speed mainly. One point in the scent of blood makes us our minions prioritize the target, meaning if we're just walking around, I attack, prioritize the target. Really simple, really good. Then five points in the quenching, we want to gain as much HP as possible. This goes from 10 to 20 to 30. Then one point to hematology, this double dips. So we have increased healing effectiveness from our intelligence. And then we also get increased health, health restored with our intelligence, making it so that whenever we take damage, like you see here, we instantly go back up. So for instance, I'll cast a few things. It's actually pretty insane how much health we get back. And I'll explain why that's important later. Then eventually three points into mana fees for the mana granted this makes it so that we can invest our mana into stuff it makes it so we don't have to build into mana regen at all it's just great because we're always using our rip blood two points travel into arcane absorption then one point to rip spirit this is of course important for later now for passives here uh eight points in the forbidden knowledge you want as much intelligence as possible it's great Five points in Dark Rituals, you're constantly casting minions, so it gives you a bunch of cast speed, which cast speed is very important for a reward. Then eight points in Stolen Vitality gives us, us HP, while also giving our minions HP. Really strong node for Acolyte. Just having both of these at the same time is great. We want as much HP as possible for a build, and we want as much HP for our minions as possible. Then 10 points in Apocrypha, the free 10 intelligence, the regen, all of that's great. Then eight points in a risen army for the increased attack and cast speed. Really good for us. Solid three points travel to cursed blood does nothing for us. Then four points to ages fall this four points. And this is enough to reach armor cap with all of the minions that I have right now. So four points is great. Gives us a lot of more damage. One point travel to blood armor, uh, 10 points into mortal tether for increased minion health. Very strong necromancer node. One point to Unbound Necromancy for the extra minion. Five points into Frantic Summons. Gives us cast speed. Gives our minions attack and cast speed. Really good for us overall. Uh, eventually, you want eight out of eight points in Tyrant once you mess around with some points. It's really good. Even though it's reducing our minion health, us having increased health is great because us not dying is imperative. Then, of course, one point into Tyrant's Legion for the extra skeleton. We want as many skeletons as possible. Then eight points of cling to life. This uh, gives us minion all res. This on top of Jirla's obsession and the minion all res blessing from dragon is enough to cap our void res on our skeletons, which means that we can do T4 Jirla and do fine because the beams that would normally kill our minions don't kill them instantly, which allows us to actually do T4 Jirla comfortably and should allow us to do soul fire bastion. I haven't test tested it, but it should allow you to do soul fire bastion. And then for the, arbor dungeon i wouldn't suggest this build at all for arbor then four points to empty the grave the reason why we're grabbing this node mainly we're not a health regen build but it gives us a lot of flat armor and the reason why we like all this flat armor is because we're using a throne of ambition pretend there's a throne of ambition there it's on loan with a different character but pretty much uh simply put as we hit a boss it's going to give us about uh i think like 200 percent increased armor which would raise this all the way to like 2700 armor which is a lot of dr on single target which is what we want especially for stuff like t4 jirla of course then one point in the disciples of necromancy for the extra skeleton so that you know we have five instead of four then five points in the veins of malice for the haste and frenzy mainly for the frenzy but the haste is nice too then Five points in the river bones. This gives us a bunch of leech for our minions because they're always critting the increased minion health leech. All of this is great for us. It allows us to reach our cap on our minion crit as well, which is nice. Then 10 points to heresy, even more minion crit while also giving us flat damage. I mean, 
pen and intelligence for our minions. Like this is insane for us. Absolutely insane node because of the infernal shade interaction with Lich's scorn. Then 10 points of blade of forlorn. I dumped my death rattle instead and go for a blade of forlorn instead with the minion crit multi. This makes up for it. And the minion cold damage, of course, works for all of our damage because we're doing primarily cold damage and the chill chance is great on bosses. And that's pretty much it for the passives. Now for the gearing. First thing off, what I want to talk about is Rip Blood and Twisted Heart. So we convert our Rip Blood into Necrotic Damage. That is so that we can use Twisted Heart of Ulcrios. Pretty much the idea is we're converting HP into Ward. As you can tell there, Ward, 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 Ward. And then on a boss, if we just simply just do it like we normally would here. I can get a lot of ward and it potentially quadruples the amount of EHP I have on a boss, which pretty much invalidates a lot of the bosses in the game right now. And it feels great. And since I have so much healing from rip blood, it instantly brings me back to top. Now, one of the biggest problems with this is if I cast something without a target with rip blood, it will consume my HP. So make sure that you're actually hitting stuff with your blood orbs before you use your rip blood, which is very, very important. And that's why we're running a Twisted Heart of Ulcrios. I got really lucky with mine, got flat HP, and it's pretty much best in slot for this build. Thanks to Wook for giving me this advice to run Twisted Heart on this build to increase our defenses significantly. And uh, it helps a lot. Since we're running so much intelligence and stuff, we can run even more ward retention if we wanted to. This just makes us so we get a lot of ward for free. And it's great. Uh, I don't think it's OP at all because we have to stand here and attack with it. But it's great to make Necro actually feel great because we're having to run a Lich's Scorn, which is not a shield, which means that we're very squishy. Now for a helmet, crit chance, we want as much flat crit as possible so that we don't need as much increased crit. The intelligence, we want as much intelligence. We want the profane mass base because it gives us adaptive damage for our minions, which are minion spells, which is our skeletal mages, which is the majority of our single target. And... It gets turned into cold damage, which the cold pen on our Lich's Scorn is good about. Skeletal Mage damage is great, just increased damage overall. Then, of course, Endurance, because we are an HP build technically, so having capped Endurance is great. Then Oracle Amulet for the increased minion hell. Uh, Oracle Amulet, I went for this instead of a Death Rattle, because not only did it make my skeletons tankier for T4 Jirla, it also made it so that I was tankier for T4 Jirla, because not only am I taking less damage from the beams, I'm also getting more uh, healing effectiveness, minion health, res, frailty, everything about this amulet's great. I would suggest using this over a Death Rattle any day. Uh, Reach of the Grave, this makes it so our minions get a bunch of attack, cast speed, and leech, which is the most important part. Uh, if you were smarter than me, you'd get cast speed on your Reach of the ga uh, Grave. I call it a skill issue, skill difference. Uh, for the chest, this is terrible. Run Intelligence, T1 crit, and then T1 shared crit, and then T5 like crit like that, and you'd be instant capped on crit with everything. Run as much HP as possible on the suffixes. And of course you can run the minion health regen, I mean, minion health base as well. Pretty much this chest is terrible. This was meant for Wraith, so you could probably do much better than this. Which is Scorn. This drops off of Formosus from Frost, Blood, and I mean, from Blood, Frost, and Death. I think it's unempowered, but I would just do empowered anyways. I had on my first try. It took Wolk nine times. So it's just varied. It's like, I think a 10% drop rate and it's rolls does have a little bit of variance going from five to 13. You might be farming this for a while, but it's definitely worth it as it gives us a lot of damage. Now rings like crit multi rings, turquoise healing effect. Intelligence is great. Minion health resistance, resistance. I found that at 50, 60 intelligence and about 600, 700 minion health is enough to keep your minions alive, especially if you're capping their reses with a, a Jirla's obsession with the all res. This makes them actually viable for T4 Jirla. Same with the ribbons of blood. Ribbons of blood is great for our minions because it makes it so they cannot be crit. So all of that combined is enough to like keep your minions alive and having a bunch of healing effect in this makes it so that when I spam my rip blood, I go back to full HP. So we get the full benefit of twisted heart for the full amount of ward, which is why we get so much ward so quickly. Then for the belt, increase minion health, health regen, increase health, health, you want as much health as possible. Ring, 
of course, Ribbon of Blood. This is a very bad ring, by the way. It bricked. I shouldn't have uh, rolled the Crit of Void, but I really thought I was going to win the three out of four, but whatever. Uh, gloves. So once you have a bunch of crit on your chest, you can dump the crit on the Drill's Obsession. You could run Cast Speed. Cast Speed would be great. Uh, attack speed would all, uh, I don't think attack speed will do anything. Yeah, it wouldn't. Cast speed would be great for your mages. They'd attack faster because they're the majority of your single target damage. You could run any kind of resistance. You could run extra void res and you wouldn't run, need to run all the all res stuff I have. You could run probably necrotic or fire res for soul fire bastion. Uh, there's a lot of things you could do with this. I just went for crit because it helped me cap my crit. Boots, HP, crit avoid. Vitality, the usual. Just make sure your crit avoids 100%. Mine isn't, and I'm probably going to die to that. <laughs> and then, of course, with the Heart of Orkuros. I am so happy I have this. This is my pride and joy. Uh, Twisted Heart. Really good rolls overall. I'm really happy with it. I'm going to be using this a lot. And then for idols, you want HP, 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 HP. You want as much HP as humanly possible because you want to get as much ward from your Twisted Heart as possible so that, you know, you're tanky for boss fights. And then, of course, a Throne of Ambition, which pretend it's here. And that's pretty much it for the build. With all that being said, thank you all for watching. Have a wonderful rest of your day wherever you're at, and bye.